Why is mx plus b? Because the n stands for slope, and we are looking for that number in front of the x. So the very first thing I need to do is draw my line, and I'm trying to get that 4y on the side by itself. Now, if I move that y to the left, I mean to the right, I'm going to end up with a negative 4 and a y. And that's not good, because I want the y to be on the side by itself. So instead, I'm going to leave it on the left, and I'm going to choose to move the x to the other side. And the way I can move a positive x is by subtracting the x. I'm left with 4y equals negative 4 minus x. Remember, the reason we do not combine the 4 and the x is because one of them has an x, the other one is just a number. Now, to get rid of that 4 in front of the y, I do the opposite of multiplying by 4, which is to divide by 4. 4 divided by 4 is 1. I have 1y one equals negative 1 minus 1 fourth x. And the number in front of the x is negative 1 fourth, so minus root of c. Now for a, I'm trying to find the slope of this line. And so all you have to do in order to get that graph is pick two points, any two points. And if you have a solvable energy, anytime you're analyzing a graph, you look at slope in terms of rise over run. You read from left to right. So we're going to start looking at the left side, trying to figure out. How can we get to the right side? So I'm going to go ahead and figure that out. Negative 30, I have to find the outside. So my rise is negative 30, and my run is 1. And that is the same thing as saying negative 30. So the answer has to be B. My goal is to try to get that equation in terms of y equals. So I'm going to first begin by drawing my line. I'm going to circle the y because that's what I need on the side by itself. And then I have to decide whether I'm going to move it to the other side or leave it. In this case, I'm going to choose to leave it on the left because if I try to move it to the right, I'm going to end up with the number 72 and the y, which is not what I want. So instead, I'm going to choose to move the 15x. Now the way I can move a positive 15x is to subtract 15x. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract 15x on both sides. And now I have 12y equals 72 minus 15x, which is good, but I need this y to be bigger than not 12y. So in order to get rid of that 12, I need to divide by 2. Okay. 12 divided by 2 is 1. So I'm left with 1y as a y equals 72 divided by 12 is 6 minus and 15 over 12 is the same thing as saying 5 over 3, no, 5 over 4x. I'm going to rewrite this as negative 5 over 4x plus 6. Remember the negative is in front of the 5, um, 5 fourths, so it needs to stay in front of it. And the 6 is positive, so whenever you switch those two things, those two terms, um, the 6 is going to be a plus 6, and the minus 5 fourths x is going to be the same thing as negative 4, um, negative 5 fourths x. And my answer right away I can see is A.
Number 10, what is the slope intercept form of the equation of a line when m equals 2 and b equals negative a fourth? Looking at these, I can already cross out a and b, a and b, because they have slopes that are different from 2. Remember, m, y equals mx plus b, stands for slope, and it is what is in front of the x. And in front of the x, we need to have a 2. The b, in this case, is negative 4, so we should have something that has minus 4 at the end. And the only one that makes sense is b, so our answer is b. What is the slope of the line graph below? When you're, whenever you're looking at slope in term, on a graph, you do slope is rise over run. You start from the left point to get to the right point. And so to get to the right, I have to walk, I have to run 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And I have to rise 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So because I'm going down, instead of saying I'm going to rise 6, I'm going to say I'm going to rise negative 6. So my slope is negative 6 over 8 because my rise is negative 6, and I ran 8. This is the same thing as saying negative 3 over 4. And so we can see that our answer is C. Number 12, which graph best represents the equation of that line of, of y equals negative a half x minus 1? Looking at that equation, I know that my line has to go down. It has to be negative because that slope is negative. So I think I can really cross out C. Because B is, is the line of the formula. And uh, I'm going to look at D. My slope needs to be negative a half. So I'm going to choose a point on this line. And if this is true, then anytime I meet in terms of that slope, remember slope is rise over run. I should be able to rise 1 and run 2. So starting from this random point I selected, I'm going to rise 1, and then I'm going to run 2. 1, 2. I'm going to rise 1 and run 2. And I'm going to go in the opposite direction. I'm going to rise 1 and run 2. Now notice that when I run, um, I'm moving in the direction that would make my line go negative. And so I can already see that my answer is C because regardless of the point that I choose, based on that slope that I'm given, um, I can find another point on that line. Now let's look at the very last one. The very last one is 13. 13 is asking us for um, which of these graphs shows a line with a slope of zero. And the obvious answer is B, because anytime you look at a horizontal line, you're looking at something that is flat. Remember, slope is how steep something is. And if you think of the floor, the floor is flat. The floor is not steep at all. Um, and the number that we would attach to something that is not steep at all is zero, has zero steepness. But if you're looking at a vertical line, when you're looking at something that ha that is so steep, we cannot put a number to it. Instead, we just say undefined. 